Okay. Um, thanks for um, organizers. And on behalf of our team, um, today I'm going to present uh, the latest discovery um, made possible by computation on the Blue Water supercomputer. Uh, we investigated uh, molecular mechanisms underlying antibiotic action uh, target on the ribosome. This project uh, was initiated by uh, PI Alexander Mankin in uh, uh, University of Illinois uh, Chicago campus. And my uh, PhD advisor, Carl Schulten, uh, is also uh, is a co-PI of this project. So um, the ribosome um, is, is the ubiquitous uh, molecular machine in all living cells responsible for uh, translating genetic, genetic information into functional proteins. Because of its uh, critical role in life, um, many antibiotic drugs target the ribosome. Um, thanks to the large scale uh, blue water supercomputer, we can simulate uh, the complete uh, ribosome system uh, up to a microsecond um, time scale. So we uh, performed a molecular dynamics simulations um, um, to study the uh, interaction between antibiotic drugs uh, and, and the ribosome. So uh, these slides highlight the, uh, the significance of uh, antibiotic drug research. Uh, uh, on the left, this is a cover of um, a report released by WHO. Uh, last month this year. Basically, uh, this report uh, sounds alarm to the human race that we, the uh, antibiotic drug resistance problem is now a global crisis. Uh, as we can see from this map, the countries in red have already uh, reported at least one case of multi-drug resistance. Uh, basically, it means that um, the patient, uh, the, the infection of the patient cannot be um, cured by any of the uh, antibiotic drugs uh, on the market um, because the, uh, the bacteria um, is resistant to all of uh, the drugs we have. Uh, the problems, the, 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 reason, the reason is that uh, the, the bacteria is constantly evolving, however, the drug doesn't. As we can see from uh, this timeline um, figure, uh, for nearly 30 years, we have no new antibiotic drug developed. Um, one of the major reason, reason for uh, this slow uh, drug development is that we, we actually know very little about how uh, the uh, antibiotic drug uh, works at the molecular level, so we cannot um, design synthetic drugs that are um, equally uh, effective. Actually, um, more than 50% of the antibiotic drugs are targeting the ribosome, uh, including the uh, famous, the, the widely uh, prescribed uh, microlite class. Um, we use microlite drugs uh, in our research um, for this particular uh, project we chose two uh, microlite drugs. The first one is irosmithin. This is the oldest microlite. Um, it has been uh, used for many, many years. Um, presumably because it has been used this, uh, for a long time, uh, bacteria has already uh, developed um, tactics to, uh, to combat the, uh, this drug. We also uh, use telosomycin in our research uh, this, this drug is also mycolite. It's the newest generation mycolite. It, it's more effective, uh, and it has uh, been appraised for no drug resistance yet. Um, we all know uh, mycolites uh, work because mycolite can kill the bacteria by interfering the bacterial ribosome. However, we, 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 don't, we don't know um, exactly how it works. This is, uh, this is called a mycolite mist. Um, this is the uh, schematic cartoon uh, figure of a ribosome. Um, the ribosome produces proteins 
um, the, the, the nascent protein starts uh, elongates from the, the core region of the ribosome uh, through a tunnel-like uh, cavity structure in the, in, in the ribosome called exit tunnel to the, to the outside of the ribosome, the cellular environment. We do know that microlite uh, bounds to the uh, exit tunnel of the ribosome. Uh, it's like a, uh, a block in the middle um, of the elongating, uh, in, in, in the road on which the elongating uh, nascent uh, protein is, uh, is being produced by the ribosome. So um, um, all of the uh, previous, um, previous studies have suggested that in order for microlite to work, um, namely to stall the translation uh, by the ribosome, uh, the nascent protein has to be uh, present in, in, in the exit tunnel. Um, our recent, uh, various recent studies uh, have shown that microlite, um, microlite drugs can actually at attack the ribosome directly, namely the, um, the nascent uh, protein is not a um, necessary part uh, in, in the interplay of the drug um, and, and, and the uh, translation st starting by the ribosome. So the first question we want to ask is, uh, does microlite act on the, on the bacterial ribosome directly um, without the presence of a nascent protein? Um, the answer is yes. Um, this is the first discovered by, um, by the Mankin lab in, in Chicago campus uh, we uh, tested uh, an, an uh, empty uh, ribosome system. Uh, empty ribosome means a, a, a ribosome without uh, nascent protein in the, in the exit tunnel. We found that uh, when the drug is bound to the ribosome, uh, uh, we found a, new, a very critical nucleotide on the ribosome, uh, U2585, changed conformation. However, due to the resolution uh, limitations of the uh, biochemical study, we, can, we don't know what kind of conformation uh, change uh, to this uh, nucleotide. Um, so we, uh, we modeled accordingly uh, the same system uh, uh, in our experiments. Uh, we performed uh, MD simulations on blue waters. Uh, namely, we have, um, we have a drug uh, we modeled the drug-free uh, ribosome system using the E. coli ribosome uh, because that, that's the system we studied uh, with our uh, biochemical uh, um, techniques. We also, uh, we also modeled an uh, aerosomizing bound ribosome. By performing microsecond uh, simulations, um, we found that when the drug is bound, um, is present, uh, the actually two nucleotides um, changed conformations. Uh, the first one is U2585, which is also observed in the bi biochemical uh, studies. Uh, the other one is A2602. Both nucleotides changed from a looped out orientation um, to a folded in orientation. As we can see uh, by this movie, this is a movie for one of our simulations. We, we performed multiple uh, independent simulations to verify uh, the founding. Uh, this is uh, one of the simulations. This this movie shows the transition events of the two uh, uh, of the tra of the conformational change of the two uh, nucleotides. In this particular simulation, uh, the U2585 um, changed orientation from the looped out orientation to a folded in orientation, as we can see in uh, by this movie then followed by uh, A2602. This simulation um, has the aerosomycin bound in the, in the ribosome. And we can see that uh, the transition happens actually uh, within a time scale of um, uh, 50 nanoseconds. We also modeled uh, a drug-free ribosome system, namely uh, a ribosome uh, without the drug. And by comparison, uh, this is the movie showing the uh, drug-free system simulation. By comparison, we, can, we, we, we don't see any uh, transition events of the two nucleotides in, in all of our 
uh, drug-free simulations. We actually repeated this simulation uh, uh, three times. Instead, we can see these two nucleotides can form a stacking interaction, uh, which, which presumably uh, stabilizes, stabilizes these two nucleotides into the looped-out orientation. Um, You say this, this this kind of interaction is uh, it's called stacking interaction uh, for the nucleotides. Also, we can we can uh, we can we can see that from this uh, um, distribution of the uh, orientation angles of the two nucleotides, we see that uh, when the drug is bound, the nu two nucleotides favors um, um, folded in orientation. So what's the implication of this uh, funding? Um, these two nucleotides, uh, U2585 and A2602, are two uh, very critical uh, nucleotides at the uh, catalytic center of the ribosome. Um, studies have shown that those two nucleoti nucleotides have to be uh, in the uh, uh, looped out uh, orientation. Uh, we call it a bulge. Um, in order for the ribosome to function properly. Uh, because the drug can induce the, uh, uh, the conformational change of these two nucleotides, presumably uh, uh, we, we show that microlite can um, um, predispose the ribosome uh, maybe even before the, the protein synthesis begins. And the the other question we want to ask is um, when, uh, when there's a, there, there's a nascent, uh, nascent protein uh, in, the, uh, in the ribosome, uh, what is the role of the nascent protein? Uh, we actually found that the nascent protein can regulate uh, antibiotic action uh, uh, of microlytes. Uh, for, for this purpose, we, uh, one of our collaborators uh, the the, wing, uh, the Wilson 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 lab in Germany. They they um, they have determined a cryo electron microscopy uh, structure, basically a density map of the complex of the colloid ribosome um, complex with uh, iris mycin uh, and uh, antibiotic drug in the uh, tunnel, as well as a nascent polypeptide. Uh, show here in, in, in green. Um, this cryo EM, de EM density is in 5.5 angstrom um, resolution. Uh, we used this uh, density map modeled an atomic structure uh, of this complex using a method called a molecular dynamics flexible fitting method, which is a method developed in, in the shooting lab. Um, uh, Based on this atomic structure, we can see uh, that the, the nascent uh, protein uh, interacts closely with several key uh, nucleotides of the ribosome. And uh, uh, we, we also re replaced this uh, irisomycin uh, drug uh, with a talismycin drug. And we equilibrated similar, uh, the system to get an equilibrated uh, structure uh, of talismycin bound uh, ribosome complex. We can see that because the uh, talismycin has this actual ring here, and stack with uh, two uh, nucleotides of the ribosome. Um, presumably, we think the. Uh, uh, Actually, it's a, it's a known fact that uh, because talismycin has this actual ring, which uh, can form stacking interaction to uh, with the ribosome, so the uh, presumably the uh, talismycin bound uh, more firmly to the bounding site in the ribosome. This can uh, at least explain in, in part that uh, talismycin is more effective than uh, arismycin. Um, Another feature of this uh, atomic structure uh, is that we can see the nascent, um, nascent protein uh, coexist with, with the drug. Actually, the drug doesn't block, block the way, uh, doesn't block the way that the, uh, the, the, the nascent protein occupies. 
uh, we are still, uh, th this is a project that's still ongoing. We are, um, uh, we are analyzing our results. So uh, we have some, uh, we, ha we have some uh, um, discoveries that the nascent, um, nascent protein actually interacts with the drug and the ribosome structures. Um, however, we, we, we're still working on it. Um, so I, 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 I have to maybe uh, report in later uh, talks. Um, basically, that's, uh, that's all from my talk today. Uh, we, we would like to thank our uh, funding agencies and uh, uh, group members in Klaus Schulten's lab, uh, uh, the Mankin lab, and, and also the Wilson lab. Um, and uh, personally, I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Wei Han, uh, who worked very hard also in this project. Um, thank you.